Number 1. The Casablanca Inn The inn was originally a flop house that evolved into a bayfront boarding house. The place is known for its Mediterranean-style architecture, its stunning vistas of Matanza Bay and the fact that some of its occupants have left in a fright in the middle of the night. The inn has had a violent history, one brimming with bootleggers, mobsters, domineering landowners, murdered party girls, and vanishing wayward children. A history that serves as cannon fodder for evil. The inn is by far one of St. Augustine's most haunted places. Number 2 Warehouse 31 The warehouse is located on the West Davis Industrial Drive and has become the beacon of some of St. Augustine's frightening stories. The warehouse has been the storefront for many companies such as Walmart and Mayflower Incorporated. Each company packing their bags rather hastily once the weird stuff started happening. Some say that it's all due to man called Al West, who might have used the house as grounds for his church, the Church of the Light Bearer, also known as the Church of the Luciferian Cult. Once a year, come Halloween, the warehouse dresses up like a haunted house and does its best to scare the living daylights out of people that grew up having nightmares about its reputation. Number 3 The Castillo de San Marcos This old Spanish fort is one of the oldest spots in the region. It was built in 1672. Since then, hundreds have sought to defend it and hundreds more to overtake it. Bodies line the catwalk during these skirmishes. It is one of the most haunted places in St. Augustine. Number 4 The St. Francis in the Dwelling is the backdrop of a tragic tale of star-crossed lovers. The story goes that a young man, in the middle of the 19th century, fell in love with a beautiful slave from Barbados. One day, the boy's uncle, Major William Hardy, walked in on the lovers and had a fit. He dismissed his nephew and decided to take out his anger on the small servant girl that they had started to call Lily. She passed away from injuries three days later and the young man, guilt-ridden, jumped out a third-story window severing his neck as he crashed through the glass. It is said that both spirits haunt the inn. Number 5 Flagler College The school is named after Henry Flagler, a railroad tycoon that brought Florida into the 21st century and it was his spirit that transformed Florida from a roughneck frontier into the tourist-friendly mecca that it is today. St. Augustine was the place Flagler ran his business operations. Flagler College was originally the Ponce de Leon Hotel and served as Flagler's go-to place for throwing parties. When Flagler died in 1913, in West Palm Beach, it is said that his spirit decided to relocate in his favorite abode, his cherished Ponce de Leon Hotel. Number 6 The Huguenot Cemetery the cemetery located across from the historic city gate was a Protestant burial ground between 1821 and 1884. The city of St. Augustine, along with the entire Florida Territory became de facto American possessions after the 1819 signing of the adams onis Treaty. Prior to American occupation the Spanish city of St. Augustine was predominantly Catholic and the only burial ground within the city was reserved for Catholics. Recognizing a need for a formal Protestant burial ground and area just outside the city gate was chosen by the new American administration in St. Augustine. The first burials occurred in 1821 just prior to a yellow fever epidemic which claimed the lives of a large numbers of the city's inhabitants. Burials continued until 1884. The cemetery is believed to hold at least 436 burials according to city records. The cemetery, although named Huguenot Cemetery, isn't believed to contain any members of the Huguenots, a French Protestant sect started in the 16th century in France. Although the living no longer use the Huguenot Cemetery, the dead still stalk the ground. Travelers report spirit sightings, cold spots, and mysterious orbs. Some even witness full apparitions. Number 7 The St. Augustine Lighthouse Constructed in 1873, the lighthouse and its surrounding mangrove forest have seen its fair share of tragedy. 
One of the most pervasive urban legends is the story of three young girls that drowned mysteriously and under suspicious circumstances a couple of yards from the lighthouse's main entrance. People have witnessed the ghost of these young ladies playing around the building. The girls have been seen swinging on swings, laughing maniacally and playing hide and seek among the trees. Locals are also wary of the place on account of its other ghostly inhabitants. Neighbors claim that at night you can hear a woman's voice screeching like a banshee, and on a full moon night you can see corpse-like faces staring out at the road from the museum's front-facing window. Number 8 The Spanish Military Hospital During the British occupation of St. Augustine from 1763 to 1783, a Scottish carpenter named William Watson purchased and remodeled the building into a dwelling. The house and a few surrounding buildings functioned as a hospital complex during the Second Spanish period. The hospital was strictly a military facility, only military were treated there, and only military personnel worked on the staff. Today, the hospital is a museum but visitors have reported all manner of supernatural activity, even the presence of an evil all-consuming force that seems to shroud the historic building in a funeral veil. Number 9 The Old Jail The building was constructed in 1891. Its construction was financed by Henry Flagler, who struck a deal with the county for $10,000 because the former jail building stood on land that Flagler needed for the construction of his Ponce de Leon Hotel. The old jail served as the St. John's County Jail until 1953 and was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1987. A total of eight men were hung from the gallows on the jail compound during its history. Overall conditions at the jail for those serving varying sentences were quite poor by modern standards and prisoners were typically used as free farm laborers during the day. Baths were infrequent, toilet facilities consisted of one bucket per cell and the diet was poor and was typically supplemented by any animals that the prisoners might catch while working on the fields. Disease, violence, and death were commonplace. In many areas of the old jail, people have heard footsteps with a sound of distinct chains moving in motion with the steps. Also, many individuals have heard the sounds of shouts and wails only to discover that there was no physical person present to have made the sounds. Number 10 The Casa de Lane Paz Once operated as a bed and breakfast, the building is known as place where the ghost of Miss Mabel resides. Miss Mabel, who was given this nickname because the owners did not know her real name, was a visitor at the inn around the 1920s. When Mabel's new husband decided to go fishing, she begged him not to go. She had a feeling something bad would happen, and sure enough, a storm capsized his boat and he drowned. Mabel stayed in the hotel until her death shortly thereafter, and apparently, even then she didn't leave. Her ghost has been seen by many, often with suitcase in hand and sometimes asking guests when are we leaving? She also moves the crystal wine decanter top and other items, and ghost hunters have determined that she has company, the spirits of a young boy and a man with a handlebar mustache also have been detected.